What's up and welcome to another episode of Open Mic. I'm here with Chloe and Jacqueline. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Yes. Chloe, you look good over there. Uh, Yeah, I think got a same shirt on, maybe some (laughs) same accessories. For those listening, uh, (laughs) they walked into this room to record this podcast wearing the exact same shirt. Not like, oh, it's the same color. The exact same shirt with a similar gold chain. Yes. And gold earrings. Have to. Wow. It's a staple. I feel out of place. They made me change where I sit (laughs) so that we broke up the the look of it. So know that I'm a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, But that gets us into today's content uh, of worry. And before we get started, actually, I want to tell you one thing I'm not worried about is the Young Adult Conference that we're hosting on October 1st and 2nd right here at High Street. You can go sign up today highstreet.org slash YA conf C O N F. We'd love to see you there in October. It's going to be a good time, but to get into today's content, we're talking about worry. Worry is kind of the worst. Do either of you consider yourselves worriers? Not warriors, (laughs) worriers difference there. I think definitely. I think worry is like such a natural human tendency. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's definitely so many different things that we worry about do you what's do you have like a bad worry story of like some something you worried about that didn't (laughs) matter or it was like once you got past the situation you were like that was ridiculous to worry about (laughs) yeah (laughs) I'm definitely a worrier and I'm like the type of worrier that like just does things way too out of the way too out of context that I'm like, you do not need to be worried about that. So for me, it's spending the night at a house by myself and no one else is home. That is terrifying. I oh, mean, to, yeah. be, to be fair, that is terrifying. So what do you do? You, do you, you call somebody when you walk in the house? What's, what's that look like? Okay. So I'll like FaceTime like a friend fair and enough. make sure that I get in safely. And then, you know, I'll double bolt the doors, of course, make sure yeah. every door is locked, turn around and look back and make sure. What if there's not a double bolt? <laughs> Chloe, <laughs> what do you? What if there's no double bolt? What mm. if you can't lock yourself? It kind of spins into my story. So when I lived in the sorority house, you know, it's a sorority house. So there's a really great security system. There's alarms. Sure. It's I'm probably one of the safest places that sure. I could be. But I remember one night I had four roommates and they were all gone, and. I was just really worried that someone was going to come into the house that didn't live there. And I, <laughs> I scooted a dresser in front of the door <laughs> <laughs> inside a sorority house where there was there already go. 60 That's other smart. people living with the alarm system. But I was so worried. Mm-hmm. And so I took that into my own hands. And oh, yeah. Literally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, I, I feel like I have like silly worry stories. Like when I get worried about something, it's like I can't find something you know that doesn't matter and i'm like i know it was here Mm -hmm. and i end up like i do a lot of like oh i know if i set this thing in this special place i'll remember where it's at and then i find it a year and a half later but (laughs) but i'll like we'll be getting ready to go to bed and i'm just like pacing around the house trying to find whatever that item was and tyler's like my wife's just like why what are you what are you doing i'm like the thing is here somewhere I've just got to find it. And I get worried that like, it's gone forever. I'm not going to yeah. be able to you know, turn whatever I need to in. But um, the, probably the worst I've ever been worried. Um, I don't know if this is funny or sad, but when I was graduating from Missouri State, I was a senior in my spring semester, getting ready to graduate. And I remember you could go online and do a degree audit and yep. figure out, do you guys have to do that? Yeah. Do your degree audit and figure out what yes. was read and what was in process. And, and I just remember like, waking up at 3 a.m. in a cold sweat, being like, I've got to do a degree audit now before I go back to sleep. And then you'd go on and see that everything that needs to be is in process. And then you're like, okay, now I can calm back down and and lay down and go to sleep. But um, I guess we'll start with like the idea of what, how would you define worry? Um, What would you say that worry actually is? Yeah, I think worry is anything that you spend way too much time focusing on than it needs to be. Of course, Mm -hmm. there's a million different things. It could be minor. It could be like probably one of the most stressful things that you've ever had to deal with. Um, But I think it's when you're dwelling on something more than it should be, because there's different things like finances that can be stressful graduating finding a job or maybe it's you don't know if you locked your car so Mm -hmm. all those things probably are valid most of the things that we worry about are valid but i think it's when we take time to dwell on it 
and not trust that God is in control of that situation. And I think that becomes the issue. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, phrases in the last couple of years is uh, when someone's living rent free in your head, mm. uh, yeah. mostly because I talk about it when we played the staff versus intern basketball <laughs> game. I talked to some people <laughs> that way. Um, but that's, that's true of anything like that. Yeah. Th- whatever that thing is, it could be major. It could be minor. It could be I forgot where I put my chapstick. It could be, right. I don't know what I'm doing next in my life. It could be finances. It could be uh, trying to find you know, a mate. It could be whatever it is that you, yeah. you want it to be or you don't want it to be that lives rent-free in your head. Yeah. Um, and those things honestly don't have a position there, but right. we're letting them take a spot that they don't deserve. So what's the right. problem with worry? Why, why is it that we shouldn't worry? Is it Cause some people like, I feel like I'm a worrier and, and it took me a long time to go. It's a problem. This is yeah. why I should fix it. Why, why should we not want worry in our mm-hmm. lives? I think kind of just like what we've been saying is that worry is something that takes up a lot of space in our heads that it doesn't need to be taking up that space. And I think that that is space that we can fill with God's word. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, like Recently, I have had a hard time spending time with God sometimes because my mind is racing of all the things that I'm worrying about for the day or that I need to get done, and I can't focus on, like, reading or, um, like, what God has in front of me because my mind is racing with all of these things that it does not need to be there. And, like, Scripture says that we can cast our anxieties and worries on God, so it's like they don't even need to be there. That space can be filled with things that are going to fill us up and bring us peace about those things that we might be worrying about oh yeah i don't know about you guys but whenever i lay down and it's when my, my mind starts <laughs> my mind starts spiraling of everything yeah. that i need to get done i'm like why did i not focus on that during the day when i had more time to actually yeah. do those things but just all it just spirals yeah the thing the, the reason that i wrote down that worry is a problem is because it dominates your mind and yeah. like you said yeah i don't think christ wants god wants anything to dominate our mind that's not him his word yeah. his holy spirit and I think we let so many things, whether it's, it's uh, a good thing, um, you need to have a good handle on your finances. You need to be in good relationships with people. You, right. you should be doing good things. And we can take good things and make them things that dominate our minds. And at a certain point, some of those things, you should spend some time taking care of those things. Yeah. As, as believers, we should be a light to the places that are around us. So if you're a student, be the best student that you can. Spend some time on it. Be wise in, in flourishing where God has you. But there's a line there of caring enough to be a good student, to be a good employee, to be a good friend, to be a good family member, and worrying that that is the most important thing about you and letting that dominate your mind. Because you can let anything take mm-hmm. up those spots um, yeah. in your mind. And that's mm-hmm. just, that's not, we, we need to be wise in, in the way that we use our mind and not overcome by yeah. anything. I think that shows like um, worrying can show like idols in our life too. Like you're saying, like it can be showing if we're worrying. I mean, yes, we need to be thinking about finances and different things like that. But if we're giving so much time and like letting it dominate our minds, like you're saying, like that shows us that that could be like an idol in our hearts and in our lives. So I think it could be like a good sign to reassess and be like, okay, no, I'm giving this more time than I'm giving God. Yeah. I remember there was a, a, a friend of mine who said that you, and I, I've heard this from places before, but your worry is going to spotlight what your idols are. Because yeah. for me, it was like, I wanted people's opinions of me to be high. Right. So whenever I thought, man, I did something, that person might find out that I did that something and they might be di- disappointed. And maybe that thing wasn't even bad, but it wasn't what I thought they would want me to do, I would yeah. end up scrambling so that that person didn't see me that way or didn't, didn't know that I messed up in that way or had that thought or did. Mm-hmm. And it was like that worry started showing up whenever the idol in my life started to kind of get uncovered. Right. And so worry can kind of be, it can be a secondary sin that kind of covers up one, some of those other idols. So yeah. worry's a, a pretty odd thing in that, in that regard. So that's what worry is. That's why it's a problem. Um, what do you do with worry? How do we right. handle it? Right. Well, I would love to look at Matthew 6 and um, just read that to you guys. So yeah. in Matthew 6, specifically um, verses 25 through 27, it says, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. 
clearly as day it says it do not worry about everyday life whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear isn't life more than food in your body more than clothing look at the birds they don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are talking about birds so are we more valuable than birds i think so uh and can all your worries add a single moment to your life And I love that last verse. That's verse 27. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? No. Sometimes it can take away um, time in our life if we just soak up so so much more. And God has created us. He loves us. He has a perfect plan for us. And I think that's so important to, to remember. And I was reading in Mark 14 today, and it was talking about how Jesus has a will for our lives and he had he had a plan for Jesus and Jesus was even like God are you sure like is there he's like I know that I'm the savior of the world but are you sure that I have to go die on a cross um, to save these people from their sins and God's like yeah yeah you do and that gave like that's just another proof that we can't be saved by anything else Um, besides Jesus dying on the cross, because Jesus clearly asked God, hey, is there anything else? And he was stressed. He was worried. And like, we know that God never and never puts us through anything that we can't handle, because Jesus has been tempted. Mm -hmm. And he's paved the way for how do we combat worry in our life? How do we combat sin in our life? And so I'm thankful that we Mm -hmm. have that we have the Bible that teaches us, hey, this is how Jesus handled it. Yeah, Yeah, I, I think, I mean, if you encapsulate all of that in together and say that it's you have to know God's plan for your life and trust it yeah and trust that one he's not going to forget about you he's not right. he's not just going to go if he if he feeds all the birds and make sure mm-hmm. that the millions and millions of birds in the in the, the world don't just all die at the same time right surely I'm going to be okay yeah right. um in yeah. his grand scheme I'm going to be okay so just to know where you sit with God the father um mm-hmm. one of the ones I mean I really do feel like I worried I mean for a long time that like kind of dominated my thoughts, dominated Mm. the way that I, that my brain worked and Matthew six and then Philippians four were some of the most uh, helpful things to me. So uh, Philippians four starting in verse six, well, I'll start in verse five. It says, let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. Uh, The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication Mm -hmm. with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And Mm -hmm. um, I just remember that, that trade that's available. Like if, if it's something you're worried about, the words are, don't worry, don't be anxious about anything, but in Mm -hmm. everything, pray about it, Mm -hmm. be thankful to God. And then he trades that for a peace that surpasses all understanding. And I just remember like the practicality of, okay, if I'm worried about it, regardless of how small or how big it is, because sometimes you go, this is so big. I know God is sovereign, but I don't know that he's going to change this big thing in my life. Or it's so small that you're like, God, I'm worried about this thing. Do you really care Mm. about, you know, this small amount of pain I'm in or this discomfort? Well, it says, don't be anxious about anything. So if something's big enough to give you anxiety or give you worry, it's big enough to bring it to God. In everything, bring it to God. So Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the size of it, the scope of it, how deep into it you are or how minorly it annoys you. If it worries you, bring it to God. And the trade that he gives is unbelievable that he gives you the peace that surpasses understanding. Peace that, and I feel like I've seen this mostly in other people, that they're in a situation that doesn't make any sense. It's difficult. Death, sickness, um, you know, closed doors on dreams and people that just have a peace that you look at them and you go, your whole life culminated to this moment and now you're getting a no and you have peace. It doesn't make any sense. Right. It's yeah. not, well, God closed one door. No, it's just a closed door. It's just yeah. none of it yeah. makes any sense, but God gives peace that surpasses all understanding and then he guards your heart in Christ Jesus. It's just one of those that's like, when we tell God, it just does something different. Mm -hmm. that is hard to explain outside of understanding what God has done for us in salvation. And he doesn't want us to just be enslaved to our worry either. So I would say know God's plan and then be comfortable telling God, God, I know it doesn't make sense, but I'm worried about this situation. This is what I'm worried about today. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, 
Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, I just think that's good because I know in like Psalms, it even says that God already knows our thoughts. He already knows our hearts. So that can be comforting too, is that he already knows what we're worrying about and what we're anxious about. But if there is such a peace that we get when we can bring it to him and feel a (coughs) sense of freedom from that. What are you going to say, Jacqueline? Well, something that I think about is there's always going to be something that is going to try to get in the way of what God wants to do in our life. And I mean, scripture tells us that Satan is prowling the earth and there's always, there's always going to be something that maybe isn't exactly what on what's on God's path for your life. And, you know, it's for us to be able to discern, hey, God is bigger than our problems. And um, I was reading this um, Prayer Circle Maker book this morning, and I, d- I didn't even know that that was going to be the chapter today, but it clearly okay. was just talking about how sometimes we have to quit telling God how big our problems are. And oh, and of course, yes, like we just talked about, absolutely pray about it. But instead, we need to be telling our problems like, hey, my God is bigger than you. Yeah. Like his plan That's is good. bigger than this small inconvenience that is just a blimp of what our life is going to be. Yeah, yeah that's good. I think um, another really practical way to like um, what to do with worry is to just let other people into it too. Yeah. I know that in Galatians it says that we should bear each other's burdens. And so, I mean, that's something so huge because I think something about worry too is that it can almost sometimes, if it gets so bad, I know it can impact the way that we treat other people sometimes too because it might be so dominating in our Mm -hmm. head. So I think that the moment we let someone else into that worry that might be taking up so much space in our head also can bring so much freedom too. So I think that's so important. Yeah, Yeah. for me, that aspect of it is it can be like a pressure cooker when you are the only one in your worry you get convinced that one i know this isn't logical if i explain this to somebody they're gonna think i'm crazy (laughs) and two nobody understands the pressure because i'm the one who has to make the choice i'm the one who has to do finish the project or do the thing uh nobody else has to answer for it and you you just kind of get like okay all the pressure's on me but as soon as you tell someone else especially like a believer or someone that can just go, yeah, man, I'm sorry. It's like you take the, 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 the yeah. lid off the pressure cooker and you're like, oh, okay. I'm not, one, I'm not crazy. Two, it's going to be okay. Yeah. I said something to someone and they didn't, you know, haul me away because I'm crazy. They, they're like, oh, no, I understand. That's hard. Right. And it's like, oh, my word. It's not just me. It, it's, this is a normal thing. Yeah. And it just kind of releases that pressure um, mm-hmm. off of things. So I think vocalizing it kind of helps. Yeah. do that both with people and with God. Um, so, so I would say just to kind of recap everything that we've said, the practical aspects of how to deal with worry would be know God's plan, be obedient. Like yeah. if you're walking with God every day, you know what his word says. Um, you know what his, his role is in your life. You can remind yourself of that. You can speak those words of truth in life to yourself and the people around you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then two, tell God. Like, yeah regardless of how big, regardless of how small, tell God and then tell people. And and I think the other side of that is when someone tells you their worry, we don't go around to other people and go, man, Jacqueline, did you hear what Chloe, she's worried about her wedding. She's how ridiculous. Like, no, we need to be good friends to the people that are around us and say, yeah, that is hard. How can I help you? Can I just be there for you? Um, and, And just be a good community for the people around us. Any final thoughts on worry? I would say, um, if you're watching this or listening to this and you don't have a relationship with the Lord, um, the best step um, to be able to fix some of the worries in your life is to start a relationship with Jesus. And I know that we all believe that that, is, that would be your next step into, you know, how do I deal with worry in your life? If you've never um, accepted Christ into your heart and said that he is the savior of the world and that he died on the cross and rose three days later that you would, you know, DM us on Instagram, um, or you can follow us at HS young adults. And we would love to have a conversation with you. If you have no idea what it means to be saved or what it looks like to start a relationship with Jesus, um, or find a trusted friend that, you know, um, is on a path of following Christ because, um, Jesus says that if you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. And so, it's as easy as that. That's the simple thing of the gospel. And we would love to walk you through that. And 
I just know that after I accepted Christ that, I mean, absolutely, I still worry all the time, but we get to confess to community of other believers that are on the same path as us that get to encourage us and we ha- we get to read the bible and see what start in john and see what um just the story of jesus is and i think that's a really great start to applying this to your life yeah yeah one of the fruits of the spirit of god living inside of you is peace yeah mm-hmm. and we can't forget that but we want to thank you for joining us on open mic we'll see you next time bye guys